Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to the editorial session of 26th July 2017. Ram Babu sir is busy and just because we don't want to stop continuity of this, I'll be taking the session today. The notes and the remaining things will be provided to you by Ram Babu sir himself. And I understand you people are used to Ram Babu sir's style. So just bear with me only for today, right? So let's quickly look at what are the important issues in the editorial. The first issue is about the crossroads at the Doklam Plateau. Swasini Haider talks about Indo-Bhutan relationship and the standoff between India and China. Here, she actually talks about Indo-Bhutan relationship, how it has evolved over a period of time. Interestingly, she talks about the infrastructure projects which India has constructed in Bhutan. If we actually look at the infrastructure projects from the main centers of Bhutan, almost all these infrastructure projects are coming towards India. And we usually have less infrastructure projects which are constructed towards Tibet. Indian projects are almost coming closer to this. Initially, Bhutan did not have much relations with China. It is to the extent that Bhutan always wanted to have relations closer with India. If we actually look at some of the important facts, we come to know that Bhutan do not have embassy of any of the P5 countries. That is, it do not maintain much diplomatic relations with any of the P5 countries. Only after the Prime Minister of Bhutan had diplomatic relations with other countries, he wanted to extend it with several countries where he increased from 22 to 53 or so on. And Bhutan traditionally have border dispute with Tibet. There are three regions where Bhutan has border dispute with Tibet or China. And this is your Doklam Plateau where the issue is happening even today. Recently, it is believed that when Wen Jiabo was there, he was talking to the Bhutan government and he was convincing them that if you can give Doklam Plateau and its access to China, then these two portions will be given to Bhutan. Many academics and analysts in Bhutan also supported this argument. The government had a controversial bilateral talks about the boundary dispute with Bhutan. India was very much conscious about this particular event. At that point of time, there were elections and it is believed that the Manmohan Singh government had actually stopped some of the important resources like LPG, oil and other things which had to go to Bhutan and the reason the government gave at that point of time was that the agreement which actually talked about subsidizing goods to Bhutan has ended and India don't want to extend it. After this, the government which was closer to China or which was having talks with China lost and the opposition party came to power. The opposition party had very good relations with India. And whenever the border talks usually used to happen, India used to go. There was a special representative. They used to be present when Bhutan and China are actually talking. At last, Swasini either says that if India is involved in the issue, then it should take Bhutan into consensus. India has to respect Bhutan's sovereignty and when a question was asked to Sushma Swaraj whether India went at the invitation of Bhutan, Sushma Swaraj had actually said that yes, whether they had requested or we had gone first, the intention here is to protect Bhutan's sovereignty. But here Suhasini Haider does not mention that India, especially Sushma Swaraj in her arguments has clearly told that India is concerned about the Doklam Plateau, not because the dispute is in between Bhutan and China, but the Chinese troops are coming closer 
to the trijunction where India is also part. So when the issue has come to trijunction, then we are involved. Else we were not involved. Here she clearly wants to argue that when the issue was between Bhutan and China, India interfered with respect to Bhutan through a special representative. But we never send our troops. But now as the issue has come to the tri-junction where Indian boundary is also present and here it is clearly mentioned that India and China has to involve Bhutan in writing. It is very, very important for India to protect this. If India doesn't do this, then the status quo will be on the side of China. This is what Sushma Swaraj argument was. So these points are missing in Swasini Haider's argument. But here we should all be aware that Doklam is very, very important for India, mainly because it is just 130 kilometer away from Siliguri Corridor, which cuts off the northeast India from the mainland or rest of India. If that happens, in case of war, China will have strategic advantage. The next important issue is about the context of the contest. Here, Swapan Das Gupta actually talks about the president and vice presidential elections where he talks and he argues that there are some times when all the political parties come together and they celebrate what exactly is our democracy. President, though he functions mostly at behest of the prime minister, still he has certain role when it comes to choosing prime minister whenever there is no clear majority. Even though he is acting at behest of prime minister, several political parties respect his position because of its neutrality. And he also talks about the vice president's role, where he says that it is very important for the vice president to maintain Rajya Sabha, where different political parties have different representations. Here, he argues about an article which had come previously in Hindu about the president and vice presidential elections, where it was said to be a fight between two ideologies. He talks against it and he says, it is against two political parties and not against two ideologies and he just tries to counter it. Then the next important issue is about the regional rejoinder. Here they are actually talking about the recent issue of a separate flag for Karnataka. Here politically they are talking that BJP which talks about Hindu and Hindi will be affected when it comes to South India, especially when Siddharamaya is focusing on a separate flag for Karnataka, which will enthuse most of the Kannadigas present. At the same time, one of the largest community, which is a big vote bank for BJP, that is Lingayat community, the chief minister has said that it will be made a separate religion. When he talked about it, the BJP which talks about Hinduism as a whole and do not want any divisions within it is being affected, is what the argument is about. And they say this may help Congress to revive. But the most important article of the day is for a hygienic track where they talk about the CAG report which has talked about the cleanliness in the railways. We all experience unhygienic packaged food which whose date has been expired, cost is more. CAG has reported all these. Though the present government has come to power by saying that we will bring governance reforms, the article questions about the transparency in hiring these contractors. Until and unless there is transparency in the entire procedure, it is very, very difficult. And at the same time, it says one of the biggest problem in railways is people, even outside people, they come who do not have permission to sell in train. They come randomly and they sell. From employment point of view, it may look fine. But if we don't, 
If we don't make proper guidelines, then the issue is that this may affect the health of the passengers who travel. So this article focuses more about what should be the measures needed to ensure that we are going for a hygienic track, right? So these are some of the major things which were there in the newspaper. The other article is mostly about the universities and an opinion, right, which is not very much important. There the article is actually talking about there should be alternative voices present in the universities. Universities or education comes under both central government and state government. If there is a political party in central government which may oppose one particular ideology, then in state government there may be something else which may oppose some other ideology. Due to this, the alternative voices will be suppressed. To have democracy, to have alternative voices, these universities should function independently, is what the author of the book on governance reforms actually focuses on. Right? So, guys, this is about the issue. We are extremely sorry that Ram Babu sir is not available. From tomorrow, he will be taking up the classes. Thanks for bearing me. Thank you very much.